Hi, I'm Randolph Miller, and welcome to another segment of Bounce Around Charleston. I have here sitting with me Tamara Curry, representing Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, Gamma Xi Omega Chapter. And I have Krista Green from the Medical University of South Carolina. They're here to talk about the social, a social action initiative. Ladies, welcome to Bounce Around Charleston. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Okay, Tamara Curry, tell us why we're here today. We are here today because uh, the Gamma Xi Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, our social action committee, is focusing on gun violence. Um, as you know, there's not a day that goes by that we do not hear of a couple of things, mass shootings or gun violence that has taken place in Charleston or the Tri-County area or North Charleston. And a lot of the violence that takes place affects our youth, our teenagers, and our young adults. And so the sorority wanted to focus on that area the second part of the year. This is our second forum that we're having in this particular forum, forum is focused on young people. Okay, and Krista, what is your role in this? Yes, so I'm the program director of MUSC's Turning the Tide Violence Intervention Program. Mm -hmm. um, we're a, an evidence-based hospital violence intervention program uh, that just launched about a year and a half ago. Um, and we work out of the adult and pediatric trauma centers mm -hmm. at MUSC Charleston. And so um, we will be presenting in partnership with this group to uh, talk about what hospital violence intervention programs are. So if someone was to ask you, what is hospital violence intervention? What would you say? I would say that it is a um, evidence-based model. It's a public health approach to addressing youth and young adult community gun violence. Um, and what we do is we offer intensive wraparound case management services to our eligible patients. And so we focus on the Tri-County area and on youth and young adults between the ages of 12 and 30 years old. We meet them at bedside after they've been mm -hmm. violently injured. And then we proceed to continue to support and provide services to them out in the community after they've been discharged. Okay, and Tamara Curry, uh, what is the AKA role in all of this? Our role is to provide the education we wanna make sure that not only are our youth educated on gun violence, how it affects um, our youth and their families, but what services are also out there. Alone so far in the year 2023, we've had over 9,800 people mm -hmm. who have been killed um, related to gun violence. And of those 338 were teens, and 60 were children. And I am sure that the statistics that I am citing to you are not going to take um, into account those that took place last week. And so it's a serious issue, it's a serious problem, and we want alternatives to our youth other than um, um, being with the wrong people at the wrong time, uh, gangs and other things that take place that put them in harm's way. And we know that oftentimes those who are affected by gun violence are innocent bystanders, mm -hmm. are people who just happen to be someplace where that violence has taken place. A movie theater, um, a grocery store, a park with children, you know, trying to just play um, daily sports. And, and so we wanna educate the community. And what are some of the things that the community can do to help with this situation? Yeah, I think that um, it's gonna take a, the community, right? This is a community level issue. This impacts all of the residents in the area. Mm -hmm. And so it really is going to take community level investment and collaboration to come together. So no one program or organization can solve this problem. It's a complicated problem and it needs a complicated solution. Um, and so really creating an ecosystem where we're all working together, collaborating, breaking down the silos. We all mm -hmm. have a very similar mission at the end of the day, but individually we have our own expertise and resources that we can bring to the table to address the issue. Just thinking about last week, as you mentioned, with the Memphis incident at that school, 
three nine-year-olds. How does that affect our community? Well, um, it affects our community, number one. It affects our, th the teachers, the administrators, and the students. You have mental health issues. Um, so so it, it brings um, a gamut of other issues, such as safety. And, um, but what we want to do is to make sure, from a community standpoint, after school programs, um, programs, summer will be here soon, um, different um, program and activities so that our youth are not on the streets, so that they have uh, substantive things to be involved in, whether or not it's the arts or creative arts or educational program, programs that teach you entrepreneurship. Those can be done in your churches, in your community centers, um, other, we have a, a horde of nonprofits that offer alternative activities. And, and as you get a little older, for those who may not have been in school, GED programs, mm -hmm. um, alternative programs and things to constructively keep our youth busy and to assist. Um, one of the things that I'd like to mention when we talk about education and Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, our first program dealt with gun safety. Mm -hmm. So that program was geared towards parents, grandparents, guardians, because oftentimes the guns that you, that you find on the street, those are guns that have been left in cars that people have kept in their um, glove compartments and unlocked cars. And so we actually gave out um, the different um, safety maneuvers for guns at home and taught education. So, so there's a, as she, as um, Ms. Green indicated, there's a gamut of different things and services that we can offer because there's no one thing that is going to assist with gun violence and education is always so important. And, okay, so now you have an event coming up on Saturday the 15th. Correct, and I, and I do want to say that it is in collaboration with the city of North Charleston. It's going to be held at the North Charleston City Hall, 10 o'clock. It is free, it's open to the public. If you have a youth group that you would like um, to bring with you, um, we um, can um, make sure that, um, that it's open, it, it, it's free, and um, you can notify us that you're coming, and we definitely would love to have you and your youth group there. And the other thing that we're gonna do is we are going to also have a gun violence survivor who will also um, be present um, and will be speaking. And I think it's, that's important to have someone who has survived yes. a situation like that. And so, what are you all expecting the people to walk away with? With that there are alternatives to, um, if, if, if you know individuals who have guns who are underage, um, what the alternatives are to being with individuals who carry guns underage, should not have them, and what alternatives are available for you also. At MUSC and within your program, um, how do you interact with the families? Oh, that's a really like core component of what we do. So we have specially trained violence intervention client advocates and they meet the patient and their family members right at the bedside, often right when they come into the trauma bay. And so we start to build rapport and trust with patients and their family members immediately. Um, what's really important is that our client advocates are members of the community. They live, work, raise their kids, also in the same areas impacted by community gun violence. And so uh, this is their home too, right? They are also personally impacted by 
the community gun violence. And so they have a really special connection to our victims of violence that not everybody can create um, in the healthcare system. And so they build that rapport at the bedside. They help to navigate kind of the hospitalization and the discharge process. But then again, they continue that relationship building and providing those resources, that mentorship or peer support beyond discharge in the community, in their homes, uh, over the course of about a year. Well, I would like to thank both of you, Tamara Curry and Krista Green, for being here on Bounce Around Charleston today with the Social Action Initiative. What is hospital violence intervention? And I'm hoping that the public will come out on Saturday, April 15th, 2023 at 10 a.m. at the North Charleston City Hall, City Council Chamber. The special guest speaker, Wendell Manigault Jr. Tamara and Krista say you are all invited. Thank you for being on Bounce Around Charleston. Thank you for having us. Oh, okay. thank you. We'll be right back after this break.